of Piedmont Wellness Center in Greensboro, North Carolina, and welcome to one of our series in our webinars. And this series today is we are going to talk about the environmental um, impact of toxins on the human body. And that's something that I see every day in practice. Just a little bit about our clinic. If, if you're not currently a patient, we are located on Battleground Avenue in Greensboro, and we treat everything from um, just hormone deficiencies to Lyme disease, and we even see patients with cancer and help support them nutritionally. So look us up on the web, and we're at PiedmontWellnessCenters.com, and we're glad that you're here. So feel free to ask questions. They're going to pop up on our screen as a question, and I will do everything that I can to get those answer during this session. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I want to start out with reading an excerpt from a book, and the book is called Slow Death by Rubber Ducky, a book that I highly encourage you to get and read. It's by Rick Smith and, and Bruce Lorre, and this is the quote, and it so resonates with me. We are a generation under siege. We are now into the fourth generation of people exposed to toxic chemicals from before conception through to adulthood. As a result of corporate influence over governments, we now find that the Northern Hemisphere is in the midst of a pandemic of hormone disrupting afflictions, and those are reaching into the homes stretching beyond the breaking point, our family and social service dollars, and undermine, undermining the global economy. Today, a child is born and faces high odds of developing at least one or more of the following ailments due to environmental toxins, and those are ADD, autism spectrum disorders, learning disabilities, diabetes, obesity, childhood cancers, abnormal genital development, and infertility. There are numerous others, but those are just sort of at the top of the list. Billions of dollars have been given to try to find cures for things like cancer, but the sad part is that billions of dollars have also been fed by tax breaks and through research dollars into the companies like Monsanto Seed Company, who provide the reasons for the toxins in the first place. So. To me, that's my soapbox. That um, is one of the reasons that I do what I do because I am dealing with the toxic effects of those environmental pollutants. Okay, and let's go ahead and get started with this slide presentation. Um, how many of you had symptoms that have gone unexplained? Perhaps you have been chronically fatigued or suffering from debilitating migraines, and I see this every day. Probably the most common symptom that I see with my patients is chronic fatigue. Perhaps you have a child with autism or you have been diagnosed as bipolar. You may ask such questions as, where did my cancer come from? And those are great questions because when you go to traditional medical clinics, most of them are going to be treating your symptoms rather than going underneath the surface to try and figure out what is wrong. For illness to develop, there has to be an underlying reason, and I want you guys to really grasp that concept. Illness just doesn't happen. We were not designed that way. God did not create us as sick human beings. There had to be some sort of influence on that health for us to get sick. What are those reasons? Environmental toxins. And I will put those in capital letters because I see that. I have seen it in practice for the past 10 years. For the first, um, I guess, 20 years of my career, I was in traditional medicine and was the one with the um, pad writing the prescriptions to treat all the symptoms. In the last 10 years, I've gotten into integrative medicine, which is where I am searching for those underlying causes, and it's made all the difference in the world to patients. The two most common sources of toxic exposure to humans, number one is heavy metals, and those are one of the most dangerous of all environmental toxins. Although they are part of our natural environment, such as we find heavy metals in our soil, 
many are toxic to the human body and for reasons that might incorporate genetics some of us cannot get rid of those toxins. The heavy metals that are most commonly the source of problems are iron, lead, cadmium, arsenic, mercury, aluminum, antimony, chromium, cobalt, copper, manganese, selenium, tin, thallium, and uranium. And you may look at those and say, well, how in the world would I come in contact with those things? Well, just simply by walking outside and breathing the air, you can come in contact with these things. So it's a lot easier than you think. There are also toxic chemicals, and these are just a few that we'll highlight, but formaldehyde, benzene, hexane, toluene. Those are chemicals that we find in everyday products that we see, um, which is pretty scary. And you can see here the picture of a smokestack from a company that's emitting emissions that are pollutants. And one of the dangers is when you live near a power plant, and in fact in Greensboro we can see one um, from Blues Creek, the, the power plants that are streaming those emissions, those have a mercury byproduct. So if you have children that your teenagers that have that have wanted to swim there in, in the creek or the lake, just remember that that lake is warm for a reason and the, and the lake is warm because of the runoff from the chemical chemicals that the but symptoms of heavy metal poisoning and you can basically read these um, and this webinar will be available for you to look at again when we when we post it on YouTube. But some of the most um, common ones that I see from a heavy metal standpoint are things like dark circles under the eyes, extreme fatigue, um, being anxious and irritable, having multiple chemical sensitivities. So if you are very sensitive to smells or chemicals, then you likely have heavy metal toxicities. Having allergies is very common for heavy metal poisoning. Um, having very sensitive teeth, mood swings, anything to do with the brain, low body temperature, heavy metals affect the thyroid. So go through these and if any of these resonate with you, if you are having any of these symptoms, then you probably should be checked for heavy metals. How to recognize heavy metal toxic exposure may not be easily identified since it takes the form of other common illnesses. Typically, it affects our organ systems. Some of the most common things that I see in practice are adrenal fatigue and thyroid disorders, um, as well as kidney failure, early signs of kidney failure. Those are very, very common because those are glandular organs that tend to attract heavy metals. But other systems can be the nervous system, the endocrine, kidneys, hair, nails, cardiovascular, GI. Um, to be able to fully identify your toxic metals, we want to do a urine toxic screen, and I'll go into that in a little bit more in depth. This is a picture of one of the results from the urine toxic screening, and you'll see here on the left hand side several of the things that we test for. And where you see the colored bars, that's a graph. So the green would be in the normal range, the yellow would mean elevated, and the red would mean very, very elevated. And, and what I do is anytime I see something in the yellow or red, I'm going to really be addressing that. Even if it's right there at the green-yellow border, I'm going to want to address that because those are levels that are just too high. So what happens when we do this screening? You come into the clinic, we start an IV on you where we are administering something called EDTA and then we give you a little bit of other another drug through your IV called DMPS right there at the end and that acts as a magnet to attract and pull a sampling of heavy metals out into your bloodstream. There, they're going to filter through the body and go through the kidneys into the bladder and you're going to collect your urine for six hours following the IV. 
Now that will be done at home. The IV will be in clinic. We'll send you home with a jug and a kit where you will mail a sampling of your urine off to a company called Doctors Data, and that's who we use for this testing. Um, in a couple of weeks, we'll have the results back showing us exactly where you lie with your heavy metals, which is a phenomenal test because knowing this is power, and you can prevent so many illnesses in your body through eliminating these toxins. How are we exposed to environmental toxins? Um, it's one thing to know that we've got them, but how are we exposed and how do we keep from getting them? Um, depends on several factors. The type and the form of the element, whether it's in a gas, whether it's in, in something that we eat or come in contact with, the route of exposure, the duration of exposure, were you exposed for a long time? Um, have you been working in a building where they manufacture chemicals or use chemicals. Um, and then the individual susceptibility, which means our genetics. And our genetics determine a lot about what we are susceptible to. These are just some of the things that you may be surprised that contain very toxic chemicals. And those are our common shampoos, our soaps, our toothpaste. Cigarettes have, that's no surprise, they are loaded with heavy metal byproducts and chemicals, um, paints, and in particularly yellow paint is one of the more dangerous because cadmium is used in ma making the paint yellow. Cadmium is one of the heavy metals that I detest because out of every single breast cancer patient that I've ever seen and tested their heavy metals, they are always elevated in cadmium. You get cadmium from cigarette um, smoke as well, and that can be even secondhand smoke. And then in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see cosmetics that we as women use on a very daily basis. And we are exposing our bodies to cancer causing agents just through our cosmetics. Now, mercury is such a toxic chemical, and I wanted to just kind of give a little attention to, to this by itself. Mercury is the most alarming, disease-causing source of environmental toxicity. Toxic effects of mercury range from chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, and my goodness how many people I see on a daily basis with both of those, to depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, anxiety, obesity, dementia, Parkinson's disease, cancer, heart failure, autism, ADD, heart disease. The list just goes on and on and on. And I'll give you a little personal story of a couple of patients who came to me a few years ago and both were on medical disability. Both had a mouthful of amalgams and both had been diagnosed with um, early onset Alzheimer's, and this was a couple. Well, I recognized the symptoms of mercury toxicity in both of them. Um, I had them, you know, over the course of a few months have their amalgams removed. We then went through a series of chelations, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And surprisingly, both patients suddenly recovered from their quote-unquote um, Alzheimer's symptoms and were fully functioning adults again. Both were in their mid-50s. Both were able to return to work after being told that you know they had all Alzheimer's and could never return to work again. So mercury is pretty dangerous. It hits to the brain, and that's where part of the danger lies. Most common sources of mercury of inorganic mercury would be dental amalgams and vaccines, light bulbs, thermometers. The newer cost-saving light bulbs that are to the twisty kind, throw every one of the ones that you have away. Those are horrible for the environment. They are just, they have, I forget how many times of mercury that the other light bulbs had. So get rid of those. Um, sources of organic mercury would be things, and these are natural sources, fish and coal. Um, so fish will, their gills when they glide over the ocean water, and the larger fish tend to be the ones that are the most mercury toxic, like tuna, um, swordfish, those kind of fish. 
So avoid those at all costs if you can because it's it's just virtually impossible to avoid getting contaminants by eating those foods. Um, and then coal producing counties, several in Virginia of patients that I see, some very, very sick who have mercury toxicity by simply living in the county where they have a lot of coal production and coal um, digging. People with amalgam fillings have significantly elevated blood mercury levels, three to five times more mercury in the urine, two to 12 times more mercury in their tissues than those without amalgam fillings. Very, very dangerous what we have in our mouth. You absorb about 80% of the inhaled mercury vapor. So if you think about going to the dentist and sitting in the chair and they are drilling into a tooth that already has mercury in it, you're absorbing about 80% of the vapor that is leaving that tooth. When you eat fish with mercury, you're absorbing 100% of the mercury that's in that fish. And you're absorbing that into your gut which is then going to be dispersed to organ systems in the body. Once this mercury is in your body, it is then primarily distributed in the kidneys and brain and can be readily transferred to the fetus via the placenta. And I think that's where we have a lot of problems with autism and, and learning disabilities and ADD is because mothers unknowingly were transferring mercury to their unborn babies um, through having mercury amalgams and through other processes that, that transmit mercury. Remove your amalgams if at all possible. Um, it may save your life and it is so true. Now we're going to get into a couple of the chemicals that we may come in contact with. Formaldehyde is one. Um, the dangerous use of formaldehyde, it causes watery burning eyes, irritation to the skin, nose and throat, headaches, nausea. These are all possible side effects of exposure. Um, the long-term effects include cancer and leukemia. So there again, you know, someone comes to an oncologist, they're diagnosed with leukemia, they're put on a series of medications including chemotherapy. Does anyone ever look and try to figure out where did this come from? Normally not, which is scary. Um, these are some of the products that may contain formaldehyde and things that I guarantee you have in your uh, medicine cabinet or your um, pantry right now. And those are lotions and shampoos and sunblock, soap, cosmetics, body wash, toothpaste, baby wipes. Baby wipes, doesn't that make you crazy? Bubble bath. We're exposing our children to unbelievable amounts of toxins every day. Benzene. Benzene is one of the 20 most widely used chemicals in the U.S. and it's used to make plastics, resins, nylon, and synthetic fibers. So part of what we use to make some clothing that we wear. Um, it's used in phot photography, rubber, lubricants, dyes, paint, detergents, list goes on and on. Um, it has been used as a gasoline additive in the past but that has been greatly reduced. The largest industrial use of toluene is in the production of benzene. Um, lots of toxic effects including um, heart conditions and consciousness. We again will have this available and you can read this um, a little bit more in detail later if you want to. But just know that long-term exposure to benzene, and a lot of us have long-term exposure, can decrease your red blood cells. That leads to anemia. It can also cause excessive bleeding and affect your immune system, increasing your chances for infection. So if you have infections that just keep coming and going, wonder why. Hexane. Um, you'll see the little elves down below making shoes, but hexane is used in the production of shoes. Very common and also furniture making, which here in Greensboro, we live near one of the biggest furniture manufacturers in the world there in High Point. It's also used in the food industry. Short-term effects include headaches, dizziness, confusion. Again, these are symptoms that you can experience on a daily basis and not know where they came from. Could it be that it is coming from your environment? High levels have been associated with neuropathy, 
Um, and I have a lot of patients who are diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy, which is numbness and tingling in, in the extremities. Um, anyway, lots of, lots of symptoms. Now, let's talk about how can we get rid of heavy metals. And there's a process called chelation, and we do this here in our clinic. Chelation is the process of binding with a heavy metal and pulling it out of the body, almost like having a magnet and attracting these metals and pulling them from the cells. This can be done through an IV route here in our clinic, or we can prescribe an oral and suppository protocol. Both protocols are very effective. For an IV protocol to work, you need between 15 and 20 IV sessions. For the oral suppository protocol to completely remove the, the toxic metals, probably will take you between one and two years. You, you cannot pull these things out overnight. If we did, it would make you deadly sick and could potentially um, you know, kill you because of the toxic effects. So we have to remove these out very slowly. It's very effective. Um, the, the IV chelation can be a bit pricey when you consider you need between 15 and 20, but it is so much better to put our dollars into something that we know will improve our health and this will produce incredible health benefits. Again, it can take a year or two to effectively remove these toxic stores. Ways to minimize our toxic exposure, and this is so important. If you walk around away with anything, walk away with this slide. Number one, eat organic. Um, foods that aren't organic are going to be exposed to the hormone disrupting chemicals that are used in pesticides and herbicides and that wind up sitting in our soils and as crops are grown these um, foods are absorbing these toxins so eat organic when you can um, sweat so exercise it, it's easy for us to, to get rid of toxic chemicals especially. Now heavy metals are a little bit more difficult to remove, but toxins that we come in contact with that are chemically based, we can sweat those out a lot of times. So getting in a sauna, um, getting on an exercise bike, walking, running, anything that causes you to sweat. Watch what you put on your skin. Avoid anything with chemicals that you cannot pronounce. So if you look at the ingredients and it sounds like a chemical, it is a chemical. And try to be organic with your skin care. Cut out the saturated fat. Toxins love fat. And I'm talking about the chemical exposures, um, the, the inhalation types of chemicals as well. Use better and less cleaning products. And I just recently read a new study, and this will, will may blow your mind, that it's actually unhealthy to constantly clean your house because you're 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 making bacteria and germs that are then going to form defenses against cleaning products and you know they're not going to be clean anymore. That's the same thing is true with um, our bodies. So we need some of the beneficial bacteria that's on our body and I think sometimes we are over cleaning our bodies and that sounds like a new concept to a lot of people. Um, the next one is make your indoor air cleaner. So be aware of the type of paint that you put on your walls, the type of paint on your furniture. Be aware of the carpet, your cleaning supplies. Do not smoke, but especially don't smoke in your home. Don't allow other people to smoke in your home. Avoid plastic and non-stick cookware. If you have non-stick cookware, those Teflon coated things, throw them away. Cook with stainless steel, cast iron. Um, you will be getting a little iron from your cast iron, but it's so much better than getting the mercury and, and a lot of the other um, toxic metals from the nonstick cookware. Drink two to three liters of water a day, and that's to help flush out toxins. And last thing, just be aware, make changes. And the reason I put the rubber ducky there is that these rubber duckies, the ones that we grew up playing with, contain like 20 different 
cancer causing agents <laughs> and a lot of people aren't aware of that that these little rubber duckies now they may have changed them but at least the ones that I grew up with are highly toxic and that is it so hopefully we gave you just a brief picture of what environmental toxins can do to your body and ways that you can minimize those ways that you can get rid of those and if you want to find out if you have toxic chemicals or metals in your body give us a call here at Piedmont Wellness Center we will be glad to do heavy metal testing on you and then we'll suggest which route would be best for you to get healthy if you are a patient that has had cancer or any serious disease process it should be absolutely mandatory that you have these things checked because to me if you are going to go to the trouble of chemotherapy and these long-term treatments for illnesses like cancer yet you're not addressing the underlying cause it's like beating a dead horse and that may eventually revisit you again so it's important vitally important to go underneath the surface and figure out where in the world your illness came from so hope you all are going to have a great day please give us a call 336-632-9944 and let us know if you have any questions and you can do that by emailing us here at the office or by giving us, giving us a call Thank you very much.